All right, everyone. Last confirmation is my voice audible screen is visible to all of you. Yes, sir. Okay, great. All right, everyone. First of all, I would like to welcome all of you to attend this session. And I'm really greatly thankful to Dr. Rana to spare, uh, who spared his precious time to, you know, impart, uh, you know, knowledge uh, with this session. And we are greatly obliged, sir, for that. And uh, I would like to, you know, introduce you all of you uh, about Mr. Uh, Dr. Ashwini Rana. Dr. Ashwini Rana has 20 years of teaching experience and seven years of research guidance to his credit. He has worked at renowned colleges and universities. He has delivered presentations in seminars and conferences, both nationally and internationally. He got 50 research papers published in national level journals and 25 research papers in international journals. He has written two books. One of them is written and oral technical communications. And another is a brief history of English literature. He has been to various esteemed colleges and universities as a resource person for delivering lectures as an examiner, as a jury member, and as guest of honor. He has guided MPhil and dissertation students. At present, he's working as HOD Languages and Humanities and Research Guide at City University, Ferozpur Road, Ludhiana. So this is a brief information. Uh, I would say Sir has uh, numerous credentials and certifications and awards uh, you know, in his list. So I'm going to make Dr. Ashwini Rana as a host, and then he will proceed further. And I would uh, request all of the participants to keep silence in the group to get the maximum benefit of this webinar. If you would have any query, any question at the end of the session, you would have enough time to ask to Dr. Rana. In between, I would suggest just listen and imbibe the quality knowledge, have pen and paper handy, write down the information and take the full benefit of this informative session. So, sir, I'm going to make you host now. Okay. Right, right. Uh, am I audible this way, Lakrit? Yes, sir, completely. And really, we, we are obliged that uh, you're helping many students and lighting, enlightening many students. Uh, with your knowledge and your precious time. All right, sir, you are now host. I'm going to mute myself. Kindly proceed with the further presentation. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Lapreet, for your kind word and that Pleasure. kind of introduction of mine. Pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. A very good evening to all. Uh, today, I have been given an opportunity to discuss writing skills with you. I'll try my level best to make the things clear and understandable to all of you. Well, I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, Lamprit, I'm not able to share my screen. Let me check, sir. So there would be a sharing. It's showing host disabled attendee screen sharing. Can you just click on this? Yes, I, I did. Okay. Again, it is showing disabled. Okay, might be uh, because I shared it. That's why it's showing. I'm going to stop it from here, this side. Hmm. Now, kindly try now. Is it working now? No, host disabled attendee screen sharing. Uh, I guess I'm not the host.
is there reena or anradha ma'am or bhavna uh, attending the session from when your english actually i'm not a host as of now yeah i'm going the to the moment you yes 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 sir i'm there good, good evening okay. sir very good evening ma'am uh, ma'am kindly uh, uh, because i don't know by chance i made you host so kindly okay. yeah kindly uh, you know make sir the host of this session give me a moment sir. thank you just I apologize for this technical glitch. Oh no, it happens. It happens uh, with anybody. Thank you. Ma'am, you know how to do that? I I do know as how to do it, so but I'm not able to see. Um... Just click on the there. There would be three button on Dr. Rana's right side where his ID is there. Just click there. You would. You, you yeah, yeah, I got. It. I got it. You got it, right? Uh, sir, please check whether uh, you are the host now or not. No, Just click on sir's ID. I I did it, sir. I did it. Yeah, he is host now. Yeah. All right, sir. Now you will be able to. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sorry for the inconvenience, sir. Thank you. Ah, no, uh, no it's, it's okay. Sir, there might be some students in the uh, list. Those who are waiting to attend the meeting, just uh, kindly uh, click on allow them to. Yes, enter. I I clicked on admit all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, kindly proceed with the. Okay. May I hope it is visible? Yes, sir. Completely visible. And what about other others? Can yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. It is visible, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, this is what we are going to discuss today: how to improve writing skills. Get to know. There are four skills when we talk about communication. When we talk about IELTS. in ielts also we take care of all the four skills l s r w listening speaking reading and writing and funnily enough we pay more attention to last two skills reading and writing the first two skills are altogether neglected listening and speaking because we believe this is not my cup of tea this is a second language this is a foreign language for me it is difficult to acquire the proficiency in this language and the best excuse that we quote that we do not have environment where people may talk to us in english or we may listen to them in english and uh, eventually we may revert back in english so listening and speaking is altogether neglected on these grounds and the two skills that we keep on using throughout our education may it be we are going for graduation or else post graduation and many a times for doctoral degree also but still we are not very confident even after using reading writing skills so excessively that how to be a master how to be good in it so this is just an attempt from my side to help you out that how we can improve writing skills generally when somebody is asked a question what is writing the people may quote various answers to my mind writing is an expression isn't it when somebody writes that person opens up his or her heart 
in the way uh, of writing in the mode of writing and comparatively it is a more formal way than speaking i mean when you speak you generally do not take care of the kind of sentences the kind of uh, choice of words you speak the way you feel like but the moment you have to write you need to think you need to be very very thoughtful that what should i write how should i write would it be understandable to another person and giving this kind of thought process when you are writing that helps you express in a better way okay some people say that we do not know the abc of effective writing so i am going to share abc of effective writing with you today to my mind a stands for accuracy whatever you write there has to be the element of accuracy in your writing next is appropriateness see if there is a round hole only round peg will fit into it likewise if there is a square hole the square peg will fit into it there are many words which may confuse you you may feel like that they are quite uh, synonymous they are quite close to each other uh, in respect of their meaning but perhaps they may not be so you have to find out an appropriate word for writing which is most suitable to your write up next is attention to your probable readers mind you when you are writing you are going to take the guarantee of each and every word that you put up in your writing isn't it and your readers they are going to make an attachment with you make a link with you by means of your writing so be very careful that whosoever is going to be the probable reader you have to bear in mind that you need to write accurate and appropriate things uh -huh. sure. and most important thing avoidance of ambiguity ambiguity something which is not clearly understandable something which may cause some kind of confusion in your mind you may be puzzled so there should be nothing that may puzzle your would be readers so avoid those ambiguities excuse me so sir. this is a according to me for uh, excuse yes? me sir. sorry for interrupting you sir uh, might be screen is still i mean it's on the first slide only so just uh, you know bringing this yes, to your notice so we are on the first Once. slide right but i have scrolled it no is it visible now no so everyone One is it let me no sir it's first slide only right so yeah yes, now sir. it's now it's moving sir thank you yes yeah, yes sir so sir you can uh, expand it also okay no but that problem. will again pose a problem no no just uh, not uh, just minimize it sir but there is a button on the bottom left side uh, um once you will click it it will automatically yeah from the sir press f5 press f5 sir yeah that would be that would work f5 done now is it visible the second slide uh second slide is visible sir but uh, it's zoomed now so kind start slide so from current slide sir Start slide so from current slide. From current slide. Okay. Now uh, this is first slide, sir. Now. Now first. Now click on second, sir, and uh, click. Here it is. The second one is here. Now the is first one is visible, sir. First one is, is visible. First slide visible. Click on second Last one, sir. Slide. click on second yeah yes. now so, it is second right so yes now it's fine sir you can go with this or you can just uh, click uh, control f5 just press okay. control and control f5 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 no just one second
now is it visible uh, sir click on the you know square button it will maximize it uh, is now sir, minimized it, uh, maybe on the bottom where your percentage is appearing sir, on the so left side of that so you can uh, start the slide show by clicking on the button uh, it's on the top left corner of the screen just a moment i'm going to share it again now is it visible yes sir the first slide is there again first slide is visible but i have uh, clicked the second one uh, kindly click on second sir again it is the second one that i have displayed okay let us right um, can you scroll sir i did okay. i've gone to five six slides okay so it's first slide to everyone yeah now it's moving now on the second, second. now now we are on the second sir so i do one thing i do not uh, go to slide show rather i keep on displaying this way only yes yes yes, yes sir yes sir <laughs> that is correct sir okay because so many suggestions even i got confused what to do right if it is visible and readable this way should i go ahead with this yes please sir thank you yes okay. i will maximize it a bit okay this is what i was explaining get to know the abc of effective writing to my mind a stands for accuracy appropriateness attention to your probable readers and avoidance of ambiguity right b stands for brevity brevity is the watchword of effective communication all the time we keep on focusing on this thing that one should be brief whenever we impart any lecture we deliver any lecture on communication skills we keep on saying that you must be brief so brevity is the watchword right then c stands for correct grammar grammar is a foundation stone or backbone for effective communication so one must be focused uh as far as grammar is concerned and the next element is clarity if you are clear then you are certainly going to make the things clear to other persons also uh lapre tigers there are people who are in the waiting room is it me who has to allow them yes sir okay done moving next what are the benefits of writing skills why this is uh emphasized that students must be good at writing skills the first benefit of writing skill is it gives us sufficient time to think consolidate shape and present ourselves just think over it if you have to talk to somebody honestly speaking we have to plan our thoughts isn't it and what we do is we use translation method i mean we think in hindi or punjabi and we keep on translating it in our mind and which takes lot of time and the moment you are speaking you are talking to somebody you have to be extemporaneous you have to be very very um, good at presence of mind you have to be very active on the spot you need to think about what to say next but this is not so when it comes to writing why because you get time to think you are able to consolidate and shape and present yourself in a better way second benefit is writing gives us sufficient liberty and opportunity to predict to plan to draft and check our expression whatever you want to uh, impart to others whatever you want to send to others you can give shape to them you can 
uh, find time to consolidate your thoughts and writing skills provides you with that liberty, that opportunity. Then writing takes a certain time duration to take a shape and texture, exactly. It's not uh, something which takes place with the snap of a finger. You need to think over it. You need to give shape to your thoughts and then only you are able to write. So it takes time duration to take a shape and texture. Then after thinking and writing goes side by side, exactly it happens so. I generally quote example of examination hall. Whenever we are sitting in examination hall, at that time what happens is we think along with writing. There may be a point where we get stuck and we take a second, we take a couple of seconds to think over that uh, issue. Thereafter, we are able to write and then we are able to arrange our thoughts in proper way. Then a writer thinks of shape and texture of writing, the direction, the pace, the expression. What does it mean? Whenever you are writing, you are keeping in your mind whether you are on the track are you moving in the right direction? The expression that you wanted to bring in your write-up, are you able to bring that? And the speed, you decide the speed, that how much of speed can be given to write a particular text. There are some processes of writing. You can uh, roughly or broadly bear in mind, uh, pre-writing, then drafting, then sharing, then revising, editing and evaluation. I'm going to elaborate them one by one. We can club them together as different stages of writing. Stage one is preparation and planning, which I had given the title pre-writing. What is preparation and planning? Before you actually start writing, you plan in your mind, you prepare yourself for the same, that what can be written on the given topic. So that is pre-writing. What does it mean? That writing has not actually taken place, but before that you start thinking, planning, that what should be written, how should it be given a proper shape? Second stage is writing. When you actually start writing, drafting, sharing. So this is what I said that drafting and sharing can be clubbed into the single title writing. Now you are writing. Okay, then stage three is checking. I mean, revising, editing, evaluating. You are going to check whether whatever you have written, is it up to the mark? All the points that, uh, that were there in your mind, did you cover all of them? If no, then you have to make changes. Then you have to go back to your write-up and you have to uh, make the requisite changes accordingly. Some questions which arise in your mind when you are preparing and planning your write-up. The first question is why? Why am I going to write this topic? I mean, you need to understand what is the purpose of writing. Unless until you know the purpose of your writing, you won't be able to do justice with your writing. Okay, next who? Never forget that your writing is going to be assessed. It is going to be checked by somebody. It is going to be read by somebody. That invisible reader is not sitting next to you, but in the times to come, somebody is certainly going to read your content. So beware, do not write anything objectionable, obscene, vulgar, off the cuff remarks, loose comments, don't do anything. So think of your readers who is going to be your reader what it stands for content that what should be written as a content for your writer now you will be in a fix that uh, what points should be covered maybe possible you have some ideas in your mind maybe possible you consult with someone else also right when suitable time it is very very important question that must arise in mind of the writer, then what should be the suitable time? See, 
right now the farmers they are struggling for past so many months and their demands their uh, requests have not been considered so far if you write something related to their rights related to their plight what kind of uh, circumstances are there they are bearing the tough weather over there some other um, what to say hardships are also faced by them then that article is certainly going to be read widely by people and appreciated by people so this is a suitable time to write something which is in the vogue next is how how stands for resources from where you are going to gather the material are you planning to visit the places in person okay are you planning to consult it from somebody discuss it with somebody then after what should be the order of your writing i mean the sequence of your writing approach movement and pace something that makes you go through the write up something that uh, motivates you to go through the write up it has to be considered under this title how generally the students quote this that sir i have so many ideas but i'm not able to write well uh, i i knew the answer but somehow i was not able to produce it in the form of uh, writing onto the sheet how should i help myself so here are some solutions i'm going to answer in the subsequent slides also what is the problem the message we want to send whenever we start writing number of ideas keep on striking in mind and we are not able to make sure that which idea should be allowed to be written and which idea should be rejected altogether so you have to be focused with the mindset you started writing do not deviate from that mindset keep that in mind okay then information we want to put down sometimes we have lot many things in mind and we are unable to uh, figure out that which one is the most suitable thing to put up over here right so you have to be focused again how to concentrate on each segment of topic yes this problem was confronted by some of my students that is why i coded it over here what happened there was a question which was offered in the 2 marks section and in 8 marks section as well the same question was offered in 2 marks section and 8 marks section now he was more than happy that he knew the answer and two questions are uh, are quite favorable to him so what he did he wrote extensively <laughs> but when it came to 8 marks answer now he was confused what should be done now this is an open secret if you are supposed to write for 2 marks 3 to 4 sentences they are more than sufficient and when it comes to 8 marks in the words of a student you have to write minimum one and a half sheet <laughs> okay so that can be a confusion and you may be uh, quite uh, in dilemma that how to concentrate on each segment of topic so these are very general problems which are confronted by most of the students now i quoted checking and revision what was it checking and revision gives you an opportunity to make sure that you have grouped your ideas in paragraphs or not now i ask one thing to all the listeners over here uh no need to answer but uh, keep it to yourself and bear in mind that what is the best thing to do what would you prefer if you are given a topic to write would you keep on writing at stretch i mean continuously you will be keeping on writing the things or you will feel it better to divide it into paragraphs of course it is always a wise decision to divide the topic into paragraphs okay so you as a writer must make sure that you group your ideas in paragraphs then composition of paragraphs the paragraphs should be composed in such a way that it seems to the readers that how beautifully this text has been written it is a purely purely up to you as a writer that how well you can draw attention of your readers then the length of paragraph according to grammar the length of paragraph 
must be seven to eight sentences. Mind you, paragraph is a single body. Okay, and in that single body, you have to do full justice, explaining all the things right in seven to eight sentences. You can exceed to nine sentences, but not ten. Then transition from one paragraph to another. Transition means a slight change. When you move from one paragraph to another, they should be interlinked. There should be an uh, element of uh, connection between all the paragraphs. Then topic sentence in each paragraph. The paragraph has three components. Number one, topic sentence. Number two, supporting details. And number three, conclusion. Topic sentence, it functions just like a signboard outside a shop. Suppose I'm a new to a place. I don't know where are the bakery products. I don't know where, where is the ready-made garment store. So what will I do? I will just tap into the market and I will keep on looking at the signboards. And just looking at the signboards, I'll be able to make out what will be there inside this shop. Okay, in the very same manner, a topic sentence lets you peep into the paragraph. You get to know what the paragraph is going to be about. Then proper beginning and ending of paragraph has to be there. Otherwise, there can be no proper sense of your ideas that you want to create. Now, checking and revision continues because some things are, certain things are there which need attention. Number one, proper sentence building. The sentence structure rules should not be neglected. They have to be religiously followed. Length of sentences. Some of the sentences can be shortened and others can be uh, given some more length. Okay. After that, patron of sentences. There are various types of sentences. There can be a declarative sentence, there can be exclamatory sentence, there can be simple compound complex sentences. This is again your choice, what type of patron you are uh, going to consider for your write-up. Then capitalization and appropriate punctuation is again much needed for your write-up to be very, very effective. Another most important thing is the agreement of subject and verb. Here, the students commit quite, uh, quite a lot of mistakes. I'm going to share another content also here. Just I'm going to touch it up. Okay. Subject verb agreement. Most, what to say, uh, problematic area for most of the students. Now, just look at it and bear it in your mind. What should be the right answer to it? Silence speak when words can't. It's not right. It has to be silence speaks when words can't. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes. Completely. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Completely visible. Thank you. Right, right. So you can see the right answer is silence speaks when words can't. Likewise, another example, strong people don't put others down. They lift them up. I have intentionally covered the action verb to make my students understand how it works. When I click for the next time, the right answer is reflected. So lift is absolutely right. Another example, a beautiful life begin with a beautiful mind. So uh -huh. if I click one more time, the right answer will be displayed. The screen is not a beautiful moving. life begins. Uh, no, sorry. it's not showing. No, we are on second screen. Okay. Yeah, now it's moving. Yeah. Okay. So this way the animations will not work. Anyway, I'll just touch upon uh, these things. Right, sir. Because okay. time is also running. I directly come to the basic thing. What is subject agreement? Just go back to your learning of tenses where you might have learned where to use do and does, isn't it? Where to use is, am, are, 
where to use was and were how the teacher was pestering you to remember that is to be used with he she and it okay am to be used with i are to be used with he they you and we likewise was and were was is to use with singulars and were to be used with plurals so we will keep it in reserve next after subject verb agreement tense of the text yes many a times the students they do not maintain tense consistency sometimes they are hopping in present another time they move to future again come back to past so a complete mess of the things is created so you need to maintain tense consistency then sentence texture when we go to sentence analysis we realize that sentences are of three types simple compound and complex so that has to be understood well problems regarding adjective and adverb uh very confusing many a times it, it is quite confusing to many students what people believe that when you add ly it becomes an adverb is it now just think over it if i ask you what is the word costly c o s t l y is it an adverb or an adjective just think over it no need to answer me back right just bear in mind likewise if i say lovely l o v e l y i added l y to love but it is yeah. not an adverb right so this confusion has to be overcome checking and revision continues you must make use of the right jargon what is jargon it is code word used by professionals okay then the appropriate expression whatever you want to express just say it in the clearest possible way brevity and precision we have just done that brevity is a watch word you might have noticed whenever we visit the high profile officers they have kept a placard on their table be brief i mean they do not have time to listen to your bull and bear story they want you to be the point okay so be to the point then clarity of expression by removing vagueness loaded words avoiding abstract nouns do not try to impress somebody with your high flying words it's always better that you make use of simple and easy to understand words if you are using some flowery language that is going to pose a problem for you okay do check spellings many a times people commit mistakes because of spellings make use of simpler and shorter words yes you can use new words but you must know what their meanings are just do not be impressed by the word if it sounds good okay just the word should not sound good you must be familiar with the meaning as well uh, excuse me sir there is a background noise kindly mute uh, there are two participants on unmute face preet and kuldeep singh uh dear participants kindly keep yourself on the mute face so that there, there will be zero disturbance koi party aa do to laane aa thodi de baje kindly mute yourself preet bhuller sir kindly mute this uh, person or remove yes yes I'm, i'm just going to thank you so it's request to all of the participants kindly mute yourself during this presentation otherwise uh, you will be removed from this uh, session so sir kindly remove the person if there would be any disturbance uh, because to ensure zero disturbance so thank you so much okay okay let's start one more time sorry for disturbing sir actually there was some ah, not at noise. all not at all okay. generally happens 
um may i hope it is visible avoid cliche and jargon yes sir it's completely visible Thank okay avoid cliche and jargon what are cliche cliche are overused or hackneyed terms which have been used for n number of times and this way they get reduced in their meaning jargon i have just told you the code words or official language so i have tried to find out certain expressions which are very commonly used and which we need to avoid homilies like slow and steady vensories okay overused idioms like a tar of strength or to add insult to injury some faded similes like beat around the bush right then that quotations like to turn the other cheek then nicknames or titles like you better half professional slogans like no comment last but not the least some foreign phrases slang and informal language sexist language like referring to women as ladies or girls it is more patronizing and belittling uh, avoid vulgar or obscene expressions there are various types of writing narrative writing where you are narrating something you are trying to explain the things to others right uh, then descriptive writing you are describing some incident or something went uh, in in your presence something happened you are describing that expository writing uh, like you are criticizing somebody you are exposing somebody argumentative or analytical writing uh, like you are reading someone else's write up then after you are analyzing it and then you are giving your inputs on that impromptu writing when on the spot you have been asked to write something research in terms of yes uh, sorry to interrupt sir but uh, sir aapki screen jo hai na wo visible nahi ho rahi hai uh, no it's visible ek bari aap dobara off karke on kar lo please you can pin my screen then perhaps it will be visible to you mm, sir it's no visible. it's visible it's totally clear now is it sir it uh, is visible clear sir might rejoin be... kar le Re yeah. rejoin karke dekhte yeah, ho sir please rejoin there might be yes you can rejoin haan ji sir okay and thereafter it is creative writing creative writing is something that we are going to focus at today what is creative writing creative the name itself explains it which shows your creativity which shows your power of imagination that how beautifully you can express yourself okay it is any writing that goes outside the bounds of normal professional journalistic academic or technical forms of literature typically identified by an emphasis on narrative craft character de development and the use of literary figurative language using phrases rhetoric devices etc broadly you can take examples of poetry writing poetry it's not a cup of tea for any tom dick and harry the people with great creative powers can write poetry uh, i'm not uh, making a mention of those people who uh, just can relate one thing with another poetry is something more than that when you can make sense when you can uh, make deeper things clearer in a uh, better possible way that is poetry according to me then novel writing biographies short stories screen writing and play writing this all uh, these all fall under creative writing it gives you an opportunity that you can give wings to your imagination okay now there are some skills of effective writing that how one can be an effective writer the first thing that you have to bear in mind is unified writing unified means that the plot or the structure of your write up should be so strong that nowhere the readers are losing their interest they are feeling that i need to complete this book then only i'm going to do anything else if this is the way that you have written at, that means that you you have given a unified writing to your readers then uniqueness of the topic yes be unique be new 
be innovative do not follow the beaten track otherwise there will be nothing innovative in your write up clarity of thought if you are clear you are able to write clearly only then you will be able to make your readers get the clarity of your thought grouping of ideas into paragraphs we have just done that never write at stretch you better divide the content into paragraphs that is comfortable for you to write and comfortable for the readers to understand effecting the right sense movement there are so many writers to quote a few like john keats is there william wordsworth is there they write in such a beautiful way that they make you feel that you are also present over there you are also available over there at that scene that they are describing to you okay so they make you feel the fragrance of the flowers they make you feel the availability of those natural objects how they are beautifully dancing this means the writer wrote so well that he or she was able to arouse your senses then proper transition or linking the things should not be in chaos chaos means total disorder rather there has to be interlink between the things sense of direction as a writer you know well that i am moving on the right track wherever you feel that i am deviating or getting distracted come back to the track feel of novelty novelty is something new see whenever you create something you have that sense that i have created something new that sense of creating something new must be there generating interest whatever you write when somebody reads it even if that person has nothing to do with the core topic that you have written but still that person finds something interesting in it that means you have written very well sense of completion just try to make sure that you do not leave anything under you find it on your own that i have given 100% efforts to this write up and it is now complete in all respects then informative content do not just copy cut paste uh, be informative to people then element of coherence i was talking about uh, coherence what is it there has to be a precision precision conciseness quite close to each other the brevity they are you know synonymous words that whatever you write it should be limited to words limited to uh, what to say expression do not just exaggerate do not just uh, keep on beating around the bush the reasoning logic they are quite close to each other there has to be some logic some sense in your writing it should not be senseless it should not be shapeless it must have something in it ethics means the basic etiquette and manners that you must have in your writing also do not be vulgar do not be obscene do not write whatever appears in your mind be thoughtful that whatever you write whatever you are going to write it will be read by somebody proper generalization uh these terms are quite uh, heavy but still i'll try to make you understand what is a generalization when mass of people think on the same thing in the same way when a great number of people think the same way we consider that thing to be a generalization so you have to generalize the things before writing abbreviation and one word substitution if you are using it in your writing make sure you have explained those terms for your readers compression do not be after the length of your text rather be after the quality of the text so compress it wherever needed do not repeat the things do not keep on harping on the same string rather give a variety to your readers remove padding and exaggeration means whatever can be removed without losing the sense do not hesitate to remove it punctuation plays very very important role see when we are talking to somebody we can bring the requisite tone in our voice but it is not possible without punctuation to bring the same tone in writing so punctuation it plays very very significant role for effective writing there are various styles of writing style of writing means that how a writer is known for what the writer is known for i have given some examples i am straight away coming to those examples wordsworth is known as romantic poet 
because he portrays nature in his writings. Likewise, John Milton is known for his grand style. Grand style means when he talks about gods, goddesses, demons, devils, right? So a style becomes the landmark for a writer. The writer is known for his or her style. Now, here are some good writing style qualities that you must possess. What are those qualities? Raymond Chapman says, accuracy, ease, and grace. Of course, the style means clear expression. Whatever you write, excuse me, why we are going to write? Just ask yourself this question. We are going to write so that others may read it and it should be clear to them. Isn't it? So style means clear expression has to be there. But clarity doesn't mean only factual information or using muddy language. It is more than that. It means that you are able to make people understand your thought process. Okay? To avoid irrelevant phrases and unnecessary ideas. Whatever is redundant, it's not needed. Just remove it. Writing should be active tight and authentic. At no place the reader should feel bored, okay? If the reader is feeling bored, then you have not written well, mind you. Use a pleasing combination of sounds. Yes, it always helps. Sounds, if you are going to write poetry, there has to be a rhyming scheme in that. Avoid repetitions. Use specific diction for specific purpose. Uh, you might have noticed the religious books are not written in the same way we read our textbooks, okay? In the very same way, poetry is not written in the same way as prose or play is written. No mismatch of traditional standard variety and modern colloquial variety of English. These days, there is a lot of intermixing of American language and uh, British language. So you have to keep an eye that what is going on, what changes are taking place. If the change is needed for your writing to make it more effective, then go for it. Then be sure what type of words and phrases you are using. Do not use anything out of the place. Do not use anything that is uh, outdated or that may be objectionable. Right? Make sure whatever is formal, informal. The sentence structure has to be taken care of. Do not take anything lightly when it comes to writing. What type of sentence is needed to bring the requisite impact? You might be familiar with affirmative, negative, interrogative, question tags, these all types of sentences because they will bring the varied flavor in your writing. I had discussed, uh, I had taken the name of rhetoric devices. Here are they. Whether your writing needs to be descriptive, narrative, explanatory, comparative, or whatever type is needed, you have to be very, very sure of this. Make use of effective logical structure and organization. Now, what you can do to make your writing more impressive, more effective, discarding the modifiers. Modifiers, adjective and adverbs. You cannot altogether discard them, but you can limit the use of those words. Discarding the fancy words. Any word which sounds good, but does not fit into your structure of writing, avoid it. Discarding cliches. Don't use hackneyed overused terms. Discarding words denoting distorted thinking. You want to say something, but the word you have chosen, it does not explain that idea in the same way. Don't use it. Discarding foreign words. If you don't know the exact meaning, the exact usage of foreign word, stay away. Controlling the use of passive tone. Yes, many a times passive tone is needed, but every time if you are using it, it can also be a problem for your readers to understand. So limit the use of passive tone. Choosing the right personal pronoun. There are students who do not know that what is the right pronoun for I? I, me, my. Okay, I hope you all are familiar with this thing. Then you need to understand what is the right personal pronoun for proper person. Avoiding superfluous words, superfluous, which are high-flying words, which have uh, 
some varied meaning in varied situations be sure you make a right choice of word selecting the right word selecting the familiar word selecting the concrete word concrete which is solid which is easily understandable and selecting the specific word which fits into the write up do not just pick up any word randomly and use it for your own purpose okay then be careful of sentence structure and length of your sentences you have to decide where you need to put the modifier and where you need to remove it you must be aware of the usage of complex and compound sentences excess of everything is bad if you use them in a great excess there can be a problem do not take grammar lightly whichever language we want to learn we must be very much familiar with that language grammar okay paragraph structure and its length should be appropriate make use of some signposts which indicate what is coming next do not surrender to words do not surrender to thoughts be focused with which um, the mindset you started writing be uh, along with that thought process only and mind you no writing can be effective unless it is re re rewritten last point be aware that you are bringing the desirable tone and color in your writing so this is all from my side if you have any questions you all are welcome to ask me those questions over to you lavprit thank you sir the session was so enlightening sir we are really obliged to you uh, if anyone would have any question kindly come up with the questions and radha ma'am reena sofia ashneet ajay kumar amit atri chanchal gauri gurpreet haryom verma harjinder harpreet and all if any uh, sir i have one question yes please okay uh so this is regarding writing since uh, if something is familiar to me it's easy to formulate the passage mm -hmm. but if something is not familiar i am not very much aware about the uh, the topic how should we dealt with such kind of situation this requires extensive reading when we read a lot somehow we get that skill how to mold the topic yes at times it becomes very difficult that we are not able to uh, figure it out that what should be written for this particular topic it, it may be little problematic at times but i suggest that if we go for extensive reading that really helps us good evening ashwini sir it was really enlightening session thank you so much for um, sparing your valuable time and uh, sharing your valuable you. thoughts uh, sir i just want to know there are times when uh, the way sir just asked that there are uh, not many thoughts in mind for a few topics but then there are times when you have plenty of thoughts but you you know you have to check into the word limit also in that situation what to do like i have got uh, say around 5 to 6 different thoughts but i need to plate on somewhere around 3 to 4 thoughts only how to prioritize at times we don't understand or at times uh, you know students don't understand what to do uh this is a sign of uh, extreme knowledge when you have wide knowledge only then you feel confused right i generally quote example of um, an excerpt from ramayana uh sanshaki ekra a night of doubt lord rama was doubtful that sita was my wife and uh, ravana kidnapped her kidnapped her so it is my personal issue should i go for war everything was set everything was uh, decided that the next morning they had to rage a war against ravan but the night before the war lord rama was uh, in dilemma likewise on the other side vibhishan he was in dilemma whatever i am doing is it suitable 
does it suit me want the people of my country they will spit on to me because i am supporting the enemy then hanuman ji comes to the aid of both and he discusses it with them that now it is not your personal issue it has become a public issue you must go to rage a war uh keeping it aside what your question was that when our mind is overcrowded with number of ideas how to figure out which idea that we have to concentrate on it requires lot of uh, expertise it requires lot of experience it requires lot of practice that you must be focused you must be uh, what to say able to understand that this idea is most suitable for it just see lord rama himself was an incarnation of lord vishnu even he got confused or maybe he got confused to set an example for us that whenever we are in uh, such a situation we can be in dilemma but later on somebody has to be there you as a teacher or you as a mentor can help your students that they need to identify which idea is most favorable to their topic thank you so much sir point well thank taken you. sir yeah thank you any other question from anyone it's a good opportunity to ask question uh, guys uh, from such a knowledgeable personality i would say so if there would be any question otherwise we'll wind up the session no question right so sir i guess uh, all the questions resolved with their presentation and uh, thank you so much thank you thanks for this enlightening session thank, thank you. you thank you sir thanks for your precious time and uh, knowledgeable session we would say we are really obliged the entire team is obliged to you thank you so much sir thank you sir thank very able information from your side thank you so much sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir all right everyone.